Okay, let's do one. Let's do a little mini lesson. I want to do this one. Robin and I were watching porn the other night. We were watching a documentary on porn the other night. Netflix currently has a couple of those uh, documentary series. One of them is called Hot Girls Wanted. Really interesting documentary. So I recommend watching that if you're interested in human behavior. Uh, one thing in particular that you want to take note of when you watch these kinds of things is the time horizons that the individuals in the porn are uh, living in. Now, what you'll invariably find is that the people with the least mastery over their life, the least governance over their own life, have the shortest time horizons. They're thinking week to week or day to day. Some of these young girls get into porn and they've been doing it for two days and they think that they found their holy grail. They think that this is it. And that's because the time horizons that you live by are inversely correlated to the level of judgment that you have in your life, the level of infatuations and resentments, ups and downs, highs and lows. So if you have a time horizon of one week, which is uh, demonstrated by the vertical dotted lines, any big fluctuation into positivity will likely create massive infatuations. Massive infatuations in positivity or massive resentments in negativity. You're in judgment. You're oscillating violently. But as your time horizons expand and you start thinking month to month, year to year, you realize that life has ups and downs. And the longer your time horizons, the more conscious evolution you've attained, the bigger your conscious evolution. Think of a big wheel moving over this compared to a tiny little ant. The big wheel just glides straight over it. This is mastery. The little ant, ups and downs, highs and lows. He's having a mutt of a time. That's low conscious evolution. And when your time horizons are so small, you're living a small game, a small life. Your space horizons are contracted. You're thinking smaller. You will be susceptible to holy grails. You'll run fantasies into your immediate future saying, this is it. I found the holy grail. I found the secret of life. There's just one secret, right? There's only one thing that's going to make all the difference. Now, you've seen people when they do this, when they're infatuated with a new girl or a new boy or a new partner. Oh my God, this is the one. I found the one they've been on like one day, right? Small time horizons. In business and money and finance at the moment, it's rampant in the industry. People think that there's one holy grail, one thing. They do one thing and it's they masters. At least three, four, five times a day here, I get the, I get the question. What, what's the secret? What's your secret? What's the... There is no one thing. There is no one thing. The fact that you think that there is one thing tells me that you probably have a very small time horizons. You've probably experienced high highs and low lows and very short time horizons. You're infatuated. And you're sitting there oscillating violently in your life because you've got to, you're thinking small, looking at other people who are mastering their life, thinking that they've got something that you don't, think that they've found the secret. But when you actually go and sit down with a master and ask them what was the secret and they actually give you the time of day to reply properly, they'll tell you that there is no one secret. There was a series of things that they did daily that over time became habitual and they kept doing it every single day with discipline and with foresight and with master planning and they got there. And if you ask them the key things, there may have been some key moments, some key turning points, some key forks in the road, definitely. But there were things that led up to that, that got them to the fork in the road, and they weren't accidents. And after the fork in the road, they went on the different path, there were things that they had to keep doing to get to the result. So when you ask them, tell me about this fork in the road, the fork in the road itself wasn't the secret, wasn't the holy grail, it was just a part of the journey. Everything's a part of the journey. And if you go and do the fork in the road because you infatuate with the fork in the road and you think that whatever they did that particular time was their secret and you go and do it and you're not ready for it yet, you won't get the result from it. I was first taught about this concept of time horizons being correlated to your conscious evolution from my mentor, John Martini. I have these posters in my office to remind me of them daily because they are very, very important to me. Let me explain. It's, a, <coughs> it's, it's a mostly scribble, by the way. I'll try to uh, explain. These here arches are actually spheres. This is your sphere of awareness. This is the smallest conscious evolution. FW stands for factory worker. Um, and he relates here the level of conscious evolution to your hierarchical stature in the workplace. A factory worker is day to day. So the D stands for day, day to day. When you start thinking monthly, you could become lower management. When you start thinking year to year, you could do middle management. When you start thinking decade to decade, you could think about upper management. By the time you get to being a CEO, you're thinking longer than a factory worker. Does that make sense? This is G for generation. When you're a visionary, you're thinking centuries. When you're a sage, you're thinking millennium to millennium. And at the level of the soul, you have eternity. There is no time and space at the level of the soul. 
On the left and the right, this represents your conservation of praise and reprimand, which we've talked about before. This is the key component of leadership. You won't become a great leader if you're not doing your soul-guided purpose. Because if it's not truly important to you, if it's not coming from the soul's desire, you will not have what it takes to bust through the spheres of conscious evolution and deal with the reprimand, to deal with people talking shit. Di Martini explained it with a brilliant example. He said, if you're a factory worker and you come to work and you've got a blowjob, people will be talking about it for a day, then they'll forget it. If you're a visionary, if you're Richard Branson, you go on one of your Virgin Airlines and you get a blowjob from one of the air hostesses, people will be talking about it for a hundred years. If you're Bill Clinton and you get a blowjob, people will be talking about it for a hundred years. You have to be able to deal with that reprimand and you only will bust through to that level of conscious evolution if... What you are doing is a soul-guided desire. If you're being pulled up from the soul, if you're focused on the senses, if you're focused on pleasures, you won't become a master.